Stand by for crime. Hi. I'm Chuck Morgan, newscaster on radio station KOP here in Los Angeles. You know, being a newscaster with two shows daily, you sometimes have to scratch around to dig up a yarn that's different from the -the run-of-the-mill stuff. Unfortunately, or fortunately, depending on how you care to look at it, I came up with a couple of jackpot stories a while ago, and now my listeners expect me to do it at least once a week. That's why when one day last month I had nothing very exciting on the fire, I was beginning to feel a bit desperate. And that's why also when the phone rang and a mysterious voice said that if I'd come to a certain address, he'd give me a story that would jack up my Hooper rating at least five points, I decided to go, even though the address was 35 miles away in the Elizabeth Lake region. So, Carol Curtis, my blonde secretary, and I climbed into the old jalopy and headed north along Highway 99. Well, Glamorous, how do you like this country? I like it. Gee, I had no idea there was such lushness so close to L.A. Yeah, well, there's a lot more now that you're here. Oh, you're just saying yeah, that yeah, because yeah, you... Yeah, I know, just because I meant it. <laughs> oh, you're a cute, Jackie boy. <laughs> oh, gosh, look down there in that canyon. What? There's a creek with real honest-to-goodness water in it. Sure, that's Elizabeth Lake Canyon Creek. Runs a year round. Which is unusual for Southern California. Oh, well, how do you know it runs the year round? Oh, I've been up here before. Doing what? Just... Riding around. Oh, I see. Uh, who was with you? Who was with... Glamour, Puss. You're jealous. I am not. Who was with you? <laughs> Nobody. I came up to get some material on that Elizabeth Lake monster story. Oh. Oh, sure, I remember. It was that yarn about the monster that used to rise up out of the lake and frighten the Indians in the old days. Mm-hmm. Is that where we're going now? Yeah, uh, we're almost at where we're going now. If the directions Amos Bugsby gave me are correct. Just who is this Amos Bugsby, anyhow? That's what we're up here to find out. Well, don't you know anything about him? Mm -mm. What he does, or what he looks like, or why he phoned instead of coming in, or anything? No. All I know is he said he had a hot story, and if I wanted it, come on up and give it to me. Oh, he sounds like one of those crackpots to me. Let's hope so. Makes the trip more interesting. Well, there's the cliff. What cliff? That cliff with the niche in it. Bugsby said the road at his place turned off to the left just before we got to it. Yeah, yeah. there it is. Good gosh, it doesn't look as though a car had been here for years. I hoped we'd find something like this. Why? What a chance of a good story. There's the cabin. Well, it's just a shack hidden away in the bushes. Looks deserted, too. Well, let's get out. Uh, wait a minute, Chuck. What's the matter? It isn't deserted. There's a, well, there's a rifle barrel sticking out of that window. Yeah, and a man behind it. Duck climber pussy's going to shoot. That rifle bullet came too close for comfort. I began to think that this Bugsby was not only a crackpot, but one of those crackpots about whom I'd broadcast something at one time. And now he'd baited me into a trap to get his revenge. Anyway, we were ducks in a barrel sitting out in the open with no chance of a getaway. I was estimating the chances of reaching the comparative safety of the heavy undergrowth when the door of the house opened. And a man carrying a rifle stepped out. He was the ugliest man I'd ever seen. Besides normally twisted features, he had a ragged scar running from the corner of his mouth to his right ear. Joe, Either one of you. I got you covered. We're not arguing that, my friend. What's the idea of using his photograph practice? Are you Chuck Morgan? That's right. Let's see your driver's license. I showed him my driver's license. His whole attitude changed at once. He apologized for shooting over our heads and explained that his own life was in danger and he couldn't take any chances with strangers. Well, we got out of the car and followed him to his shack. Uh, Sit over there, Miss Curtis. I I think you'll find it comfortable. Thank you. Look, this is all very fine. Oh, yes, yes, I know, Mr. Morgan. I don't blame you for being annoyed, but every minute of every day, my life is in danger. Why, I haven't slept for more than two hours at a time for weeks. I don't dare step outside this cabin in the daylight. What's it all about, Mr. Bugsby? Yeah, you said you had a story for me. What is it? I have, Mr. Morgan. And when I've finished, 
I think you'd agree that your trip up here was worthwhile. I should. So I better begin at the beginning. As you can see, uh, I'm a very ugly man. And that means I'm a lonely man. Loneliness is just about the hardest burden a man could have to bear. And that's why I answered the ad in the newspapers. Then don't tell me you joined one of those lonely hearts clubs. Oh, I understand your content, Mr. Morgan. And I hope when I've told you the rest of my story, you'll change your attitude. I did more than join a lonely hearts club. I replied to an ad which stated that a young widow desired correspondence with a middle-aged gentleman who lived in the country. My home was in Lancaster. I have a wheat ranch there. Well, we corresponded, and eventually Helen... Uh, Helen Cutler, her name is, asked me to visit her at her home in Santa Monica. I accepted, but with a certain amount of misgiving. Yes? Uh, are you Mrs. Cutler? Yes, I am. Uh, well, uh, I'm Amos Bugsby. Amos Bugsby, after all these weeks. Oh, this is exciting. Please, come in. Uh, uh, then you're not disappointed? Disappointed? Why, what a strange thing to say. Why should I be? Well, uh, well that is my look. Nonsense. I'd be a fine one if I were just interested in a man because of his looks, now wouldn't I? <laughs> you just sit down here and make yourself comfortable. <laughs> We've a great deal to talk about. <laughs> well, yes, we have, Helen. You know, I was really worried about, well, about letting you see me. <laughs> It was foolish of me, wasn't it? It certainly was. <laughs> now, oh, come in, Bob. I want you to meet Amos Bugsby. Amos, this is my brother, Bob. Oh, well, how do you do, Bob? How do you do? What'd you say the name was? Uh, Bugsby. Amos Bugsby. Bugsby, eh? Helen, is this the man you've been telling me about? Yes. I've been urging him to come and see me for weeks, but up to now he's been afraid I wouldn't like his looks. Well, now, his looks are unimportant. But there are other things that are. Remember that, Helen. But, Bob... See you later. Oh, dear. Well, what's wrong? Did I do something to offend your brother? What did I do? Oh, it isn't that. And Bob didn't intend to be rude. It's just that... Well, since my late husband died, Bob has been taking care of me. We aren't very well off, and he's so afraid I'll marry some man who, well, who hasn't the means to... Oh, well, he needn't worry about that as far as I'm concerned. Oh, my, no. Really? Amy? Yes, indeed. I have a wheat ranch, you know. It's a big one, too. And I've saved my money. I'm a rich man. <laughs> I guess I'm worth nearly a half a million dollars. Oh, Amos, that's wonderful. <laughs> I can well afford to support a wife. Yes, I can. <laughs> <laughs> You're embarrassing me, Amos. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I didn't intend to appear forward. <laughs> You're not angry? Of course not. Uh, and you will let me call again? Well, of course. I want you to call just as often as you can. Can't be too often to suit me. <laughs> Well, that's the way it started, Mr. Morgan. Exactly as I have told you. But didn't you become suspicious? It seems to me that both those people were pretty obvious about their intentions. Suspicious? Ah, uh, yes, I suppose I was. In fact, I'm sure of it. Well, then why in the world didn't you do Miss that? Miss Curtis, do you know what it really means to be lonesome? Why, yes, I suppose I do. There have been times... You know that... what it means to wake up every morning of your life and know that you have to face each day completely alone? That among all the people you'll meet, there's not a single soul who cares. And there's no one to do little things for you, or for whom you can do little things. That when night comes, you, you'll go to bed in an empty house, and you'll lie awake there, longing for the sound of a friendly voice or the touch of a loving hand. Well, that's the way it's been all my life, Miss Curtis. I've never been without an ache in my heart and a longing. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, no, no, no. That's all right. I, I just want you to know I closed my eyes to those suspicions. And why I only saw and heard the things I wanted to see and hear. Oh, yes, yes, I knew. But, but the happiness I experienced during the two weeks before Helen and I were married was worth every moment of the misery and the fear that followed. Then you were married. Oh, yes. We were married. Yes, indeed. We were married by a justice of the peace... And after the ceremony, we stopped by Helen's home so she could pick up some things before starting on our honeymoon. Well, here we are, my dear. You run in and get your suitcase, and then we'll drive directly to the airport. I got the plane tickets right here in my pocket. Come on in with me. <laughs> oh, yes, of course. Of 
Cross it. Oh, <laughs> Ellen? Yeah? How about a little kiss? Nuts. Come on inside. Well, well I'm sorry, my dear. <laughs> oh, well, there's time enough for that later, eh? Yeah, time enough for that later. <laughs> Well, here we are. Now, you hurry along. Don't be too long. Uh, <laughs> I'm an impatient husband, you know. Oh, you are, huh? Bob! Hey, Bob! Well, well, the newlywed, huh? So you got him, eh, Helen? Yeah, I got him. Everything ready? Everything just dandy. Okay, stupid, get in here. Uh, what's that? Are you talking to me? <laughs> well, what do you mean in here? Look, monkey face, don't ask questions. Just do like you're told. Well, Helen, what's the meaning of this? Just do like my brother says, darling, and you'll find out. Yeah, but I don't understand. Why are you pointing that gun at me, Bob? So you'll know I mean business. Are you going to do like I say, or do you want it right here? Well, doesn't he understand that I'm your husband? Uh, that you're in love with me? In love with you? Are you kidding? Who could fall in love with a mug like that? Uh, but darling... Don't I... darling me. <laughs> Look, not head. Let's face it. You fell for a sucker game, and now you're going to pay off. Sucker game? Do you mean that you don't love me? That, that you think I'm ugly? Ugly? Why, you don't even look like a human being. You think I'd fall in love with a clumsy oaf like yourself? You're crazy. Yeah, but you did fall in love with me. You married me. You're my wife. I won't be for long. What do you mean by that? Just what you're thinking, old man. Right now, I'm your wife. Ten minutes from now, I'll be your widow and heiress to half a million dollars. Oh, no, no, no. Helen, you can't mean that. Well, you wouldn't... All right, lover boy. Cut out the sob stuff and get in here. No, 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 you can't. Why, not in cold blood. Well, well, give me a chance. I'll pay you. If that's what you want, I'll... Hey, who's that? How should I know? We can't ignore it. His car's out front. Take care of him. I'll answer it. Okay, lover boy. This will fix you. (laughs) after that. I woke up on the floor of an adjoining room. I heard voices in the next room. There was some talk of overdue rent, and I didn't wait to hear any more. I got out of there as fast as I could. And then what did you do? Well, I didn't dare go home. I knew they'd be after me. I was so confused and disillusioned. I spent the night alone in the motel. Why didn't you go to the police? I thought of that the next morning, and then I read in the papers that Helen beat me to it. Beat you to it? Oh, yes. Yes, Helen was very clever. She told the police that I had married her and then deserted her. So now the police are looking for me, too. (laughs) Helen and her alleged brother are clever, all right. Even if you did go to the police, what kind of a case did you have? The records show you were married. You have no proof other than your own word that she and her brother had threatened to murder you. On the other hand, you'd run away. That's it, Mr. Morgan. That's it exactly. Mm. But until I'm dead, Helen cannot inherit my estate. And that's why I'm hiding out here. That's why every minute of every day, I live in fear for my life. Yeah, vicious circle. On the other hand, Helen and her brother won't leave town until they do locate you. And in order to exist, they've got to continue with their lousy business. What do you mean by that, Chuck? I mean, I know something about this racket. Helen and her brother move from city to city working on people like Amos. This is probably the most important job they've ever run afoul of. So they'll stay here until they find Amos, working the same gag, only under different names. And what are you going to do about it? I'm going to watch for the next newspaper ad to appear. Then I'm going to answer it. And marry Helen myself. than 300 marriage bureaus and lonely hearts clubs that dot this broad land of ours. Some are on the level and some aren't. Of those that aren't, the vast majority stop at merely fleecing the poor unsuspecting victims of their life savings. And then there are those like the one that sold Amos Bugsby down the river that go in for cold-blooded murder. Well, Carol and I left Amos in his mountain hideout and drove back to town. I'd made him a promise and intended keeping it. But it was going to take a lot of doing. I had a talk with Pappy Mansfield, owner of KLP. And two days later, an ad appeared in the papers that could have been inserted by the same gal who trapped Bugsby. This time, her name was Mary Hayden. She was living in Pasadena. 
She was still a young widow who wanted to enter into correspondence with someone living in the country. I answered the ad, got a fast reply. And for two weeks, we kept up the hottest correspondence you ever read. Then came the inevitable invitation to visit her. So on a Thursday morning, I drove out to the address she'd given me in Pasadena. It was a small frame house set in among some pepper trees. The girl who answered my ring fitted the description of the woman Bugsby had married perfectly. Are you Mrs. Hayden? Yes, I am. Well, I'm uh, Jim Sawyer. Jim Sawyer? Well, this is a surprise. A pleasant surprise. Won't you come in? Well, thank you. It's a pleasant surprise for me, too, Mary. Uh, you, you don't mind my calling you Mary? Oh, not at all, Jim. Why is it a pleasant surprise for you? Well, I, I hardly expected to find so attractive of a, a girl being lonely. Well, it's because of my brother Ray. Since my late husband died, he's been taking care of me. We haven't much money, and Ray is very particular with whom I associate, especially men. I see. But uh, tell me about yourself, Jim. You hardly look to me like a fit character for a lonely existence. <laughs> Well, as I told you in my letters, I work for an oil company and spend most of my time in the field. Never any women around, and when you're boss of a crew, you don't get to know your men very well. I understand perfectly. Oh, here's Ray. Ray, this is Jim Sawyer. Jim, this is my brother, Ray. Hello, Ray. What did you say the name was? Sawyer, Jim Sawyer. Sawyer, Ray. Mary, is this the man you've been telling me about? Yes. Isn't he attractive? <laughs> I knew he would be. <laughs> he wrote such nice letters. His looks are unimportant. But there are other things that are. Remember that, Mary. But, Ray... See you later. Oh, dear. What's the matter with him? Did I say something wrong? Oh, it isn't that. And Ray didn't intend to be rude. It's just that... Well, he's so afraid I'll marry some man who hasn't the means. Oh, well, he needn't worry about that as far as I'm concerned. Really? When I said I was in oil, I meant I had shares in several wells. My income runs around 50000 a year. You think that'd satisfy your brother? Oh, Jim, that's wonderful. I didn't mean to be bribed. Well, I didn't mean to be proposing marriage at this early stage. You, uh, you will let me call again, won't you? Well, I shall be disappointed if you don't. Thank you. Come as often as you like. You'll always be welcome. Well, the whole thing was following the Amos Bugsby pattern perfectly. That pair read their lines without a fluff. Ray had entered on cue. The entire act was running as smoothly as the oil on my alleged wells. During the next ten days, I saw a lot of Mary. We did the town. And in spite of myself, I had a pretty good time. Especially since every tab I picked up was on Pappy Mansfield. I was glad that Carol Curtis wasn't around to witness some of our cozy rendezvous. She'd have blown her top. As a matter of fact, she came pretty close to doing just that when I told her the date was set for Mary's and my wedding. From where I sit, Mr. Morgan, marrying this female is entirely unnecessary to the success of your nutty idea. And from where I sit, Miss Curtis, marrying this female is entirely necessary to the success of my plan. Why? Because she's already married to Amos Bugsby, remember? If we can't get her into anything else, we can charge her with being a bigamist. Well, I still don't then see why... Then stop trying to see. I'm going through with it. I've worked for a month on this story, and I'm not going to junk it just because some dumb blonde... Is... <laughs> I'm sorry, Glamour Puss. Oh, Chuck, please don't do it. I'm worried. About what? Well, well, what if they decide not to murder you until after the honeymoon? Decide not to murder... Mm. <laughs> oh, Glamour Puss. <laughs> You're wonderful. <laughs> I went through with it, all right. Only it didn't turn out as I'd planned. Something happened I hadn't counted on. Something that very nearly threw me for a loss. The Amos Bugsby pattern held through the ceremony, which was performed by Justice of Peace. But when we started back to Mary's place to pick up her things, it changed. Mary didn't say two words until we stopped in front of the house. And she just sat there. Well, what's the matter, sweetheart? You don't look very happy. I'm not. Oh, you get over it. Lots of brides are unhappy the first couple of hours. Come on now, get your things and we'll get... No, Jim, no. I don't want you to go in there. Why not? I want to say goodbye to Ray. Ray isn't home. He had to leave town this morning on business. 
Well, look, I'm not going to let you carry those heavy suitcases. They aren't heavy. I can manage them all right. You stay here and wait for me. I'll be right back. I sat there a minute or two trying to figure this one out. Then I saw a car pull up to the opposite curb. Bill Meggs and Pappy Mansfield were inside. They sat there watching me. Well, this was it. I signaled them to go around back of the house, got out of the car, and started up the walk. You two-timing little chiseler, you think that's going to make any difference? I mean, you're... Don't give me a can. I won't let you. What's going on here? Well, if it ain't the brand new groom, all in a sweat to get started on his honeymoon. Stand over there, jerk. Put down that gun, Ray. It might go off and hurt someone. Well, now, that's just what it's going to do. And you're going to be on the receiving end, punk. And my name ain't Ray, it's Bob. Before that was Joe, before that was Charlie. Stop it, Ray, stop it. What? <laughs> Ooh, Shut up, you little tramp. I don't care whether you fall in love with a square or not. To me, you're just another sucker walked into our little trap. I'm going to knock him off. And you're going to inherit his dough and split it with me just like we always done. Please, Ray, please. He's my husband. I'm in love with him. I didn't think it would ever happen to me, but it has. It's the first decent feeling I've ever had. I don't want him to die. I want him to laugh. Why, you dope? Just Listen a minute, you... Ray. Mary, in a way, I'm glad this happened. Now you know how the others felt. They had good, clean, decent feelings, too. Men like Amos Bugs. Amos Bug? Hey, who the devil are you? Not the man you think, Ray. I'm Chuck Morgan, newscaster and radio station KLT. Newscaster? Mary, did you hear that? I don't care who he is. He's my husband and I'm in love with him. I'm sorry, Mary. I'm not your husband. Not while Amos Bugsby and a few others are alive. And you don't love me? I despise you, Mary, for a cheat and a murderess. Oh, no, no, you can't mean that. You do love me. All those things you said. None of them were anywhere near as bad as the things you said or did to men like Bugsby. You're no good, Mary. Instead of winding up on a honeymoon, you're going to wind up in a gas chamber. Well, listen to that, will you? Wind up in a gas chamber. And just how do you think you're going to pull that one out of the head? You know, if you've got an idea you're going to walk out of here without a hole in your head, you're nuts. I'm not altogether a fool, Bob. Listen. You hear that? That's the police coming in the rear door. The minute I give the signal, they'll be coming in the front door, too. Why, you... Uh, not before I take care of you, they won't. Mary, stand back. Get out of the way. No, you're not going to shoot him. I don't care what happens to me. I love him. Get out of the way, I said. No, I don't care what happens to me. You're not going to shoot him. Mary, you little fool. Yeah. Let him have it, Bill. Wait, wait, come on, come on. Well, Happy and Bill Meggs didn't arrive any too soon. As far as Mary or Helen, or whatever her name was, is concerned, they arrived too late. Bob's bullet caught her squarely between the eyes, killing her instantly. It's probably just as well. Her fate would have been the gas chamber, as it will be the fate of Bob, her alleged brother. Bill Meggs was on Bob like a leech the second after he pulled the trigger. It was an easy matter to subdue him. Well, that's the way things go. People who think they can get away with any kind of racket usually wind up behind the eight ball. As for Amos Bugsby, he's back on his wheat ranch, a wiser and happier man. He's no longer interested in romance. Which is a decision I almost reached myself when I asked Carol Curtis and Pappy to have dinner with me that evening. Nope. I never go out with married men. It's against my principles. Listen to her against her principles. Listen, bird brain, I'm not a married man. My wife died this afternoon. She was shot to death. Oh, that's so, isn't it? Yeah. Well, I don't go out with widowers either. That's against my principles, too. How do you like that? Pappy, what would you do with a babe who had so many principles? I'm not a babe. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what I'd do, Chuck. You remember that red-headed niece of mine I told you was coming down from San Francisco for a visit? What red-headed niece? She's 22 years old and a real knockout. Oh, yeah, yeah. Now, I was thinking, Chuck, if I bought the tickets, you could... No. Uh, what? Oh, but, Carol, if you no longer want to... Pappy Mansfield, you deserted me. Oh, I hate you. I didn't know you had a red-headed niece who was good-looking. <laughs> and if you think for one minute that... <laughs> <laughs>